Hey everyone, this is a supplemental video to the three Android tablets for $100 video we just released. This video shows some data we recorded from the Amazon Fire HD 8 Plus, the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 Lite, and the Lenovo Tab M8. First up is peak luminance at a 100% window. The Amazon managed to get the brightest with 421 nits, followed by the Lenovo with 417 nits, then the Samsung with 378 nits. The Amazon had the most accurate display for grayscale and colors measured. The color temperature is pretty warm. You can see the display isn't pushing blue very hard. There is an option in the display settings named Blue Shade that you can enable and adjust its intensity. With Blue Shade on at its lowest intensity, you can see red gets bumped up and blue is pushed down. This made the grayscale way too amber and it isn't an option for improving the display's accuracy. But supposedly it's a good feature to use at night before going to sleep. In the saturation sweeps, you can see the display has the biggest problem with cyan, but the display is decent overall with an average out to error of 3.12. Color checker also shows good accuracy. Skin tones have a delta error under 2, and again you see cyan is the biggest issue. Here you can see how the Amazon tracks standard RGB gamma. Next up is the Lenovo. You can see at its default setting it pushes blue, and red drops through the grayscale. The Lenovo actually has a setting that improves this slightly, and I would recommend keeping this setting on for a more accurate picture. There's an option in the display settings called Color Mode, and you can change it from default to warm. You can see blue is pushed a little less, and red gets a small bump to make the color temp a little less cool. Here you can see the saturation sweeps using the color mode set to default, and you can see some improvement when switching the color mode to a recommended warm setting. These are the color checker measurements with color mode set to default, and you can see the improvement when color mode is set to warm. Here you can see the Lenovo's gamma performance between the default and warm color mode settings. Overall, we recommend always keeping the warm color mode setting enabled. Last up is the Samsung. This display also pushes blue. The only option we could find to combat this was the eye comfort shield option in the display settings. You can see it reduces blue, but it goes too far in lowering blue and pushing red in the low end of the grayscale. Whites look more balanced with this option on, but blacks and grays were too red. You can see in the saturation sweeps everything is pushed towards blue. Cyan has the worst delta errors overall. When enabling the eye comfort shield, you can see some improvements, particularly with cyan. Unfortunately, red takes on a more amber tint, and you'll see how this affects skin tone errors with the color checker data. Here's the color checker data for the Samsung in its default display setting. When enabling the eye comfort shield, many of the skin tone errors increase, and people in movies and shows may end up looking a little orange with the setting enabled. If you're watching content with people in it, it's probably best to leave the eye comfort shield off if you're looking for the most accuracy. If you're watching something without people in it, and it uses a lot of cyan colors, like an underwater documentary or something like that, then you can try enabling the eye comfort shield to see how it looks. Last up is gamma tracking with the Samsung's default settings and with the eye comfort shield enabled. Overall, the Samsung had the brightest gamma tracking out of the three tablets. Accuracy aside, the Samsung had the sharpest image out of the three tablets in this comparison. The Amazon was a little softer on details, but we preferred its warmer color temperature over the Samsung's and Lenovo's. It's nice that the Lenovo had a setting that could improve accuracy a little, but I found video playback on the Lenovo to be the poorest out of the three tablets. It often showed a lot of artifacts, and did not have a very clean picture overall. If you have any opinions or questions on these three tablets, comment below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the full comparison video on these three tablets, and we'll see you in the next video.